Today we're Excel speedrunning stage three, case two from the FMWC 2020 season with no mouse. This case is called Diamonds Are Forever, and it's a sales analysis of a jewelry retailer. We also have to define product categories. We start by replicating our cost and revenue columns. We have to convert these to a common cur uh, currency, so we multiply US dollar sales by seven and a half and keep all others as is. Then we, move en we remove any unneeded columns. We add a column for sales hour, which is needed for question 13, and we copy and paste all formulas down and move on. Now we add our categories. Note that these are added not in the order presented in the case, but in the order of prioritization. So categories with no exceptions are first, followed by those with more. We're gonna see why later, but it makes, mu it makes it much easier to determine category this way. No assumptions tab in this case, so everything we reference is gonna be from this tab. And I'm not going to reformat this tab as it's only going to be used for our calculations. Private label is determined on the brand column, Q. No exceptions here. Uh, once I'm done with that, I'm just going to copy and paste this formula to the other categories, which are determined by one or two criteria, just because it's easier to edit them that way. So similar to private label, private label, brand collections is also determined by column Q. Children is determined by column M. Gold and silver are determined by column G. Diamonds are next. That's determined by columns I and K. Note that the K says it's not a diamond if it's a private label, brand collection, or a watch. I don't really care about that stuff here. You'll see why soon, but I'm taking care of this as the diamonds column is to the right of the other three. And pearl is the same logic as diamonds. For packaging, the item column F must be a box, case, pouch, or tissue. Rather than typing this all out, I just copy and paste after I have the first criteria down. And then I add it inside the uh, quotes. It's a lot easier that way and faster. Uh, for watches, the column F must be a watch, watch box, or a watch strap. So instead of typing all three out, I use a nested is number and search function. Makes it much easier and faster. Precious stones is similar logic to diamonds and pearls, only that there are three criteria here, which we'll add. It has to be a ruby, an emerald, or a sapphire. And again, once I have Ruby down, once I have Ruby down, I'll just copy and paste it twice. And now I can edit everything inside the uh, quotes rather than typing everything out. A lot easier and faster that way. Once we're done with this, we go to color stones. That's the only tricky one. So it can't be a diamond, pearl, ruby, emerald, or sapphire. Well, that's, con that's taken care of in the three preceding columns. So the sum of those have to be zero. Again, and also it cannot be enamel or zirconium but it has to be something. That's why we have the not equals to zero there. And after um, I type this out, I'm just gonna copy and paste this and uh, part of it so I can uh, just edit the uh, column from I to K a lot faster that way. Okay, so other. Other is basically everything else. So if, if all the preceding columns are zero, then it's other. And um, now to determine the final category. We're just gonna use an index match here and bring in the first category that has a one in it. We're gonna copy and paste everything down and now we're done with this tab. We're gonna add another helper tab to help us answer the questions. The first thing we're gonna get is the unique orders in column E and the sales associated with each. This is gonna allow us to answer question five, which was the largest purchase made in December. Notice how I'm gonna lock column AF here when I'm doing the values. This is gonna help us when we copy and paste the formulas over. There's AF and I'm locking it. All right, uh, so we're gonna copy and paste this down and now we're gonna get the unique stores in column D and the sales associated with each. We're gonna add another criteria that the date, column A, has to be on or after December 23rd. This is gonna allow us to answer question six, which store had the highest sales from December 23rd to December 31st. Note that I'm not adding a criteria for December 31st because the entire report is for the month of December only, so it meets the criteria. Then we're gonna get the unique clients in column AA for question seven, which client, besides the anonymous ones, has spent the most money from 12.1 to 12.15. Note that I use a, I nest the filter function in the unique function to not bring in any anonymous clients. Uh, now we're gonna bring in the period sales associated with each client. All 
All right. Now we're going to get the, uh, I think the unique categories. This is just a transposed array of the categories that we entered in the other tab. Uh, and then we're going to get the total sales associated with each category. And this is going to allow us to answer questions 9 and 10. All right. So after this, there's two more. Uh, we're going to get the unique shop assistants in column Z. This is going to help us answer question 11. Which salesperson has the highest net sales of jewelry in the children category? That's column AF or AV, sorry. All right, and then the last one after this, we're going to get the unique col uh, unique hours in column AH. That's the one that we added in the beginning. And this is going to help us answer question 13, which hour had the highest total net sales uh, of the private label collection category. Um, and when we're done with this, now we're going to answer the questions. So question one, total December sales in USD. This is a sum if the sales, uh, column AF, and any sales in uh, USD, which is column Y. Um, so after we do that, we're going to multiply it by 7.5 to get it to a local currency. Alright, uh, question two, weighted average discount percentage. This is a uh, sum of total discounts, column AE, divided by total list price, column AD. So AE divided by AD. Discounts divided by list price. Uh, once we're done with that, we're going to move on to uh, question three, which is the weighted average market percentage. This is total sales, column AF, minus total COGS, AC, divided by COGS, AC. So AF minus AC, you nest that in the parentheses and then uh, divide that by AC. Question four, uh, number of December purchases. We're going to do a nested formula here. Count A to count the number of items. And then uh, unique to count the number of unique orders in column E. Um, subtract two from the total. Uh, the header is one and a value of zero is another. We don't count those. Question five, largest purchase. This is just from our helper tab, the max of column B. Uh, question six, store with the highest sales from December 23rd to 31st. I use an index match here on our helper tab. Index is our lookup column, D. Purchase uh, match. We're trying to find the biggest purchase, so the max off column E. And then another lookup in E to get the position of that value in E. In e. Now that we've done this, I'm just going to copy and paste this to answer questions 7, 9, 10, 11, and 13, changing the column references each time. Since we've added the columns in order of these questions, it's easy to know which columns are the references. You take the match column in the current question, skip one, and then the next column is the index one in your next formula. Uh, questions 9 and 10 use the same lookup table, but since question 10 is looking for the second worst, we can just replace the max function with a small function. You know, while, while I'm doing this, I'm sure X lookup works as well, but I use index match for two reasons. Uh, one is habit. And then two, mainly, XLOOKUP is not backwards compatible with older Excel versions. Not all of my clients use Excel 2021 or Excel 365, so I can't use XLOOKUP for them, and I have to use index match instead. Uh, so we're coming up on here and finishing up this uh, uh, part. Um, so we're going to answer the remaining questions now. Question eight, which item has the highest discount? It's going to be another index match. We'll find the, inde uh, the item in column F and a match with the maximum of the discount column. This is column AE. This is going to give us an earring. Um, however, two of the six answer choices in this case have earrings. So we're also going to bring in the color, which is column G, and both stones, which are column I and K. And we're going to use an ampersand uh, between all of this to concat concatenate each of them. I'm bringing in, uh, I think this is I. I'm going to do K now. And this is going to give us a gold earring with an emerald and a diamond. Okay. Uh, so great. So question 12, total sales of the gold category at the Zeta store from 12.6 to 1231. This is just one long sum ifs. We're going to sum, ifs, sum up sales, column AF, and then enter our criteria. Category is gold. That's AV. Store is Zeta. That's D. Date is on or after 12.16. That's column A. Again, we don't need a criteria for anything before or equal to 1231 because the entire data set fits that criteria already. So that's 12. Question 14, we're just going to copy and paste this long sum ifs from 12 and change the criteria. And we're going to do this for 15 as well. So criteria is not gold, it's diamond. Store is not zeta, but it's kappa. 
and date is not from 1213 but 12 to 24. And we're going to copy and paste this again to nest it since we're asking for average weighted average markup. It's the same as question uh, three. AF minus AC, nest that in parentheses, and then divide that by AC. And the question 15, uh, same thing, copy and paste along some ifs. What do we want? Average discount, so that change the summation lookup. Criteria is not diamond, but brand collections. Store is not kappa, but beta. Date is not from 1224, but 125. Copy and paste the criteria to replicate it. Change the date to 1215, and don't forget to change the sign. Copy and paste along some ifs and change the sum range, as we want to divide discount by list price, and that's going to give us our answer. Great. Um, this concludes our speed run. I was hitting times of 12 to 14 minutes the first couple times I, I ran through this, so pretty happy I was able to get sub 11. Um, if you enjoyed this video, like, subscribe, and share, and uh, leave any comments uh, or leave any feedback in the comments. Thank you.